Welcome to worship, St. Mark's United Methodist Church in Mount Joy. Today is May the 3rd, the fourth Sunday of Easter. We're still in the 50 great days of Easter. The fourth Sunday of Easter is known as Good Shepherd Sunday. This morning then our scripture will explore what it means to follow the Good Shepherd. Now, Jesus is the gate. Behind me is our neighbor's yard. They have a fence around their yard so their dog was able to run free. Let's think what it means to rest safe and secure and in the comfort and the safety of being in that pen with Jesus. But Jesus also calls us to leave that. And when we do, we find abundance. Let us worship God.
For the children's sermon this morning, I want you to think of a time when maybe you actually saw a sheep. We don't see them much or deal with them, but maybe you went to a, a petting zoo and you actually got to pet or to feel the, the wool of the sheep. Maybe you have a stuffed animal, a lamb, that you'd like to play with. In today's Bible lesson, Jesus tells us that he is the good shepherd. A shepherd is someone who cares and, and loves the sheep and protects the sheep that they don't get in harm's way. And there's even more, that the sheep know that the shepherd loves them and trusts them, and the sheep can recognize the voice of the good shepherd. We listen for the voice of Jesus. We follow that voice as well. Maybe you can think of uh, your close friends or your mom and your dad. When they say something, we immediately recognize their voice. They don't have to say, this is mom or this is dad, but we recognize their voice because we are close friends. And that's the way it is with Jesus. Jesus loves us. We recognize his voice. Jesus wants the very best for us. I hope uh, you're doing well, and I look forward to seeing all of you. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for Jesus who loves the girls and the boys so very much. Help us to, to live our lives in such a way that we always do what would be pleasing to him. We pray in Jesus' name. Before we sing this first song, I just want to tell you a little story about it. Um, I was, this is called This is the Day. And so when I was teaching the children This is the Day, um, they were kind of, you know, giving me these faces. And I said, what's wrong? And they said, well, Miss Joy, we want to sing This is the Day in our way. And I said, your way? What's that? So they started singing it. And I said, oh. They, they see this song in their videos in Sunday school and in Bible school. So I said, okay, we'll compromise. We're going to sing it first the old-fashioned way. <laughs> and then the second time we'll sing it then their modern way. So I'd like you to join in, whichever version you know, just join in and sing along with us. <laughs> Yeah. 
is from John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens, the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not heed them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How would you answer someone who asks about what the Christian faith is all about? There are people who might be feeling the first inklings of faith and have questions. In this time when people are spending more time at home, perhaps viewing online services, and are pondering matters of faith. We should always have a response in mind to answer issues of faith. However, we have to be careful. There's a danger of of losing people with too many details. Sometimes we make the Christian faith harder than, than it needs to be. The best place to begin is by saying that faith is about entering into a relationship with Jesus. It's that simple. Like a good friend, Jesus loves us and never leaves us. Jesus claims that he is the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. The good shepherd cares about the sheep under her or his charge. The shepherd protects the sheep from harm or wandering away. Throughout the Bible, we find people longing for a leader with shepherd-like qualities who will protect, provide, and care for them. We enter into relationship with Jesus, the Good Shepherd. In doing so, we trust the shepherd. The second part of our answer of what is faith all about is about being in relationship with one another in the church. I believe the church at its best is where people love and care for one another. We do not always have to agree with each other, but we always show love and respect to each other. Oh, from time to time, believers will disagree on a variety of subjects, and that's all right. We listen. We debate, we pray, but we always respond out of love and concern. The relationships we have with one another are that important. Friends, it's never too late to mend a strained or broken relationship. Jesus is the way that leads to abundant life. Today's lesson from the Gospel of John chapter 10, Jesus declares very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. Again, we are in relationship with Jesus. In stark contrast to the good shepherd, whose major concern is the welfare of the sheep, the thief and the bandit seek to harm or destroy and care very little about the sheep. We may grow weary of being compared to obstinate sheep, especially when very few of us probably have ever had any contact with the animal. The sheep learn to trust the shepherd. 
further, they respond to the shepherd's voice. As Jesus explains, he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. The sheep respond to the shepherd's voice because they trust the shepherd. From their own experience, they, they sense that the shepherd will not harm them, but always have their best interest at heart. Further, they will not follow a stranger, Jesus said, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. The sheep under Jesus' care know enough not to follow the voice of a stranger who may harm them. We listen. We respond. We obey the voice of Jesus. Problems arise when we do not listen for Jesus' voice. Today there are so many voices to contend with, pulling us in all sorts of directions. Sadly, there may be times when we're not even aware that who we are listening to is leading us astray or on the wrong direction. Honestly, it's not always easy to distinguish the right voice from the many voices vying for our attention. Those who seek to harm or lead us down the wrong path, Jesus labels as thieves and bandits. We look to the character of the person. Is what the person luring us to do something contrary to what Jesus would want us to do, what Jesus has called us to be? Does the person exhibit a sense of humility or place him or herself at the center of attention? Those are just a couple of questions for us to consider. Our goal is to always be true to Jesus, the Good Shepherd. We listen and follow the lead of the Good Shepherd because we recognize His voice. His is the voice of love. We trust the Shepherd knowing Jesus will never let us down. There were some religious leaders present as Jesus taught. They did not comprehend what Jesus was saying to them. Obviously, they did not view themselves as persons who lead others astray. The Gospel writer John notes, they did not understand what he was saying to them. Friends, it's always easier to claim that we do not understand than to reorder our lives to follow Jesus. So Jesus tried again. This time claiming, I am the gate for the sheep. Jesus is the gate or the door. The gate is for the benefit of the sheep. All will need to enter or pass through the gate. Once inside, the sheep will be protected and safe. Inside, they will also be nurtured and loved. Outside the gate, it is dangerous. The sheep would no longer be under the gentle protection of the shepherd. In contrast, the thief's goal is to destroy. While well, Jesus came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Following Jesus leads to abundant life. Jesus loves us that much. Jesus declares, whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. Following, listening to Jesus leads to abundant life. I believe that's Jesus' mission statement. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Abundant life. Jesus' words bring comfort when we find ourselves hurt and harmed by the systems of the world. While others might make all sorts of grandiose promises, only Jesus can offer the fullness of life. The thief comes to destroy. Jesus came to give us life, abundant life. Earlier in John's Gospel, Jesus taught for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. John 3.16 
God loves each and every one of us that much. We follow Jesus knowing that His is the voice of love. We follow Jesus knowing that only He is able to give us what we need, abundant life. We rest safe and secure inside the sheep pen. However, to experience the abundant life that Jesus promises, we have to venture outside. This time when we cannot worship inside of our church, we have the opportunity to be the church as we share the love of Jesus with our friends and our neighbors. We do so by continuing to write notes of encouragement or check in with our neighbors by phone. Our task is to bring as many people as we can into the fold. That is why we share our faith. The abundant life that Jesus offers us involves doing something beautiful for God each and every day. Everything that we do is from that abundant life that Jesus gives us and touches every single aspect of our lives, including all that we do in the church, in our homes, at our work, everywhere. We bring beauty to our neighbors' lives. We abide. We remain with Jesus. As we go forth, I want you to remember Jesus' words and live by them. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Let's pray. Gracious, loving God, we give you thanks for these words of Jesus, this abundant life that he promises. We pray that we may follow that voice of Jesus. We know there's so many things that pull us away from, from your love, from the church, from Jesus. But we pray that we may be strong enough to be true. Continue to nurture us, continue to love us in this time when we are alone. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Good morning to members of St. Mark and anyone who's watching this worship service. I hope it was very meaningful for you. And I would like to share something that is a help to me now and many times. It's from the book of Philippians, the words of St. Paul. I have learned the secret of being content in every and all situations, whether well-fed or hungry, living in plenty or want, being able to get out and about or being at home. I hope you have too. Have a good day. Bye.
We hope you have found this worship experience to be meaningful in your life, giving you hope and confidence and strength as we seek to live out our faith. If you're new to St. Mark's, we'd love to hear from you. You can contact us at info at Connect St. Mark's. When this time of pandemic is over, we invite you to come and worship with us at St. Mark's United Methodist Church. We have a 9 o'clock traditional service filled with the choir and singing of hymns and a 1045 contemporary service filled with praise music and extended times of prayer. Also want to give a word of thanks to everyone. Your faithfulness shines through in your commitment to St. Mark's Church. Your weekly offerings and tithes have continue to sustain our church. Thank you so much for, for continuing to support the ministry of St. Mark's Church. And now today we go forth. We go forth following the Good Shepherd, listening for the Good Shepherd's voice, not being led astray. We go forth in the name of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Stay safe, everyone. Look forward to our time when we can actually meet together. But until then, know that you are in my thoughts and prayers. God bless you.